Arabesque 1966 film. Arabesque is a 1966 American comedy thriller spy film directed by Stanley Donan and starring Gregory Peck and Sophia Loren, written by Julian Mitchell, Stanley Price, and Peter Stone based on the Cypher 1961 novel by Alex Gordon. The film, along with Donan's immediately prior film Charade 1963, is usually described as being Hitchcockian, as it features as a protagonist an innocent and ordinary man thrust into dangerous and extraordinary situations. It was the last film of that genre which Donan would make. Arabesque was filmed in Technicolor and Panavision, and was distributed by Universal Pictures. Plot In an undercover mission, Major Sloan John Marival kills Professor Raghib George Coolaris, an ancient hieroglyphics expert at Oxford University, and steals a hieroglyph-encrypted message. Sloan then asks Professor David Pollock Gregory Peck, who has taken over Raghib's class on hieroglyphics, to meet with shipping magnate Nejim Bishravi Alan Badel on a business matter. David declines but changes his mind after being forced to enter a Rolls-Royce Phantom Roman IV, where he meets Middle Eastern Prime Minister Hassan Gina Carl During and his ambassador to Great Britain, Mohammed Lufty Harold Casket. Gina asks David to accept Bishravi's offer of employment. David meets Bishravi, who asks him to decode the inscription on the piece of paper Sloan stole. David is attracted to Bishravi's girlfriend Yasmin Azir Safia Lauren, who tells him that Bishravi had Raghib killed and will do the same to him once he decodes the message. Their conversation is interrupted by Bishravi. David keeps hidden until Sloan brings it to Bishravi's attention that David and the cipher are missing. Overhearing the conversation, David wraps the cipher in a candy in his pocket among others, a red one with the number nine. As Bishravi's men search for David, Bishravi demonstrates to one of Yasmin's employees, Emsley Jimmy Gardner, that he can buy people for their loyalty or else exact extreme revenge. Forced to show himself, David seemingly abducts Yasmin. They flee from one of Bishravi's henchmen, Mustafa Larry Taylor. In the course of the chase, Mustafa and David struggle at the zoological gardens when another man intervenes and kills Mustafa. He identifies himself as Inspector Webster Duncan Lamont with CID. When a guard approaches, Webster kills him before revealing that he is working with Yasmin. Webster knocks David unconscious. David awakes in a moving panel van in the presence of Webster. David seeing the bag of candies on a shelf in the van, tells Yusef that Bishravi has the cipher. They use truth serum on David, after which he talks what they believe is gibberish about the number nine. Believing that he was telling the truth about Bishravi, Yusef tells Yasmin to work on Bishravi while they throw David out of the vehicle. The next morning, Yasmin arrives home and tells Bishravi that Yusef for whom the cipher was originally intended, killed David and Mustafa, but does not yet know the coded message. While Yasmin believes Bishravi has the cipher, Bishravi states that David must still have it. Later, Yasmin bursts into David's apartment as he finishes a phone conversation with Gina. She convinces him that she hates Yusef and pretends to help him because his boss, a general Ollie orchestrating a military takeover, has her mother and sisters hostage. She tells him he needs to crack the cipher so she can report back to the embassy, which will ensure their safety. David and Yasmin go to the construction site Yusef uses as his front. They spot the van, but Webster takes the candies to eat. Following him, David and Yasmin watch him discover the cipher and telephone someone from a phone booth and learn that person is Bishravi, with whom Webster is entering into a double cross against Yusef. Bishravi and Webster are to meet at the Ascot racetrack. At Ascot on race day, 
Yasmin is with Bishravi, while David searches for Webster. David and Yasmin make plans to meet at 9.00 p.m. that evening at Trafalgar Square, after David gets the cipher from Webster. At the track, David spots Webster rendezvousing with Sloan, who hands over an envelope of money. David knocks the cipher out of Webster's hand, and the envelope floats into the track with the horses approaching. As David and Webster struggle, Sloan attempts to stab David but accidentally kills Webster. David runs onto the track and retrieves the cipher just before the horses gallop by. David makes copies of the cipher, mailing the original to himself for safekeeping. At a newsstand, he then notices newspaper headlines which implicate him as Webster's killer. David believes that Mrs. Raghib Malia Nappi may know something important about the cipher. He visits her at home and shows it to her, also giving her the news that her husband has been killed. She was living secluded and had not heard. Mrs. Raghib examines the cipher and tears it up in frustration implying that she knew that Raghib was working on something dangerous. David also tells her that he is working with Yasmin, whose mother and sisters are in danger at the hands of General Ali. Mrs. Raghib replies that Yasmin is lying, in that she has no mother or sisters, only a father who happens to be General Ali. That night, David hops into Yasmin's car and they drive off. Angry at Yasmin's deceit, David lies, telling her that he does not have the cipher with him but has decoded the message, and makes up a nonsense meaning to tell her. She relays that information to the embassy via telephone regardless. David and Yasmin arrange to meet later, at the hotel where he is staying. After she drops him off, David flags down a taxi and follows her to Yusef's construction site. David sees Yusuf operating a wrecking ball, swinging it repeatedly attempting to kill Yasmin. David rushes to save her and Yusuf is electrocuted to death by a live wire. David determines that the hieroglyphics are simply a version of the nursery rhyme Goosey Goosey Gander. He then looks for secret writing on it, such as invisible ink, and getting it wet the ink washes away, leaving a speck which he determines is a micro-dot. At a scientific store, they examine the dot under a microscope. They don't know where to go, until Yasmin sees on a newscast that Gina has just landed at the airport. David and Yasmin make it to the airport a few minutes before 12.30, where David shoves past security guards to Gina, who is beginning a welcoming speech. David knocks Gina to the ground just as bullets from Sloan's machine gun land where Gina was just standing. Lufty then shoots Gina dead with a pistol. Yasmin whisks David off and convinces him that the man who was just shot is only an imposter of Gina. They discover that the real Gina was abducted by Bishravi and locked in a trunk in the back of a truck. David and Yasmin hide in the truck and free Gina just as the van arrives at Bishravi's country estate. David, Yasmin, and Gina quickly escape on horses from his stables, being pursued through crop fields by a farm combined with sharp blades. Bishravi and Sloan also pursue them in a helicopter. As they cross the disused Crumlin steel girder railway viaduct, David drops a wooden ladder down into the rotors of the helicopter as it passes underneath, causing it to crash and burn. David and Yasmin end up in romantic bliss on a punt back at Oxford. Cast Production The original working title for the film was Criss Cross, which was later changed to Cypher before becoming Arabesque. Producer-slash-director Stanley Donan wanted Cary Grant for the role of Pollock after working with him in his previous film Charade, and the dialogue for Pollock was written with Grant in mind. However, Donan was later quoted as saying, Grant didn't want to be in it. It wasn't a good script and I didn't want to make it, but Gregory Peck and Sophia Loren, whom I loved, wanted to be in it, and the studio implored me to make it, because they said, 
it's ridiculous not to make a film with Peck and Safia. They said it would make money, and they were right. Donan later estimated that $400,000 was spent on the script alone, and cinematographer Christopher Challies recalled that the film went through several rewrites. Challies said that the more the script was rewritten, the worse it got. With Peck and Lauren already contracted to do the film, Challies recalled that Donan told him our only hope is to make it so visually exciting the audience will never have time to work out what the hell is going on. Peter Stone, who was brought in very late to make improvements in the dialogue, everything was shot as though it were a reflection in a Rolls Royce headlamp. Donan described his technique in shooting the film. I had hoped to avoid any sign of the studio manner this time, so I tried something like the living camera technique. The handheld camera had been used a lot lately, especially in Europe, but the trouble had been too much wobble because the operator has to carry the sheer weight of the camera while he's working. One of our boys had the idea of suspending the camera to give the operator all the mobility of the hand camera without the weight. Arabesque is sort of going to the extreme until it almost makes you sick. Granted, we did do some interesting photographic things. Peck said about Donan that Stanley had a terrific instinct, like a choreographer, which, of course, he had been. But even in an ordinary dramatic sequence, he'd use the body to punctuate what was happening standing, relaxing, everything it was all choreographed. If you look at the picture, we were always moving because Stanley just wanted to keep the ball in the air the entire time, and he used every camera trick you could think of. He also loved filming Sophia's décolletage and her rear end. Sophia Lauren's request for 20 different pair of shoes for her character led to her lover in the film being described as having a foot fetish. In a chaste scene peck, who had been injured years earlier in a horse-riding accident, could not run fast enough to keep up with Lauren, who kept pulling ahead. Peck implored his co-star to run slower, reminding her he was supposed to be rescuing her, but Lauren asked Donan to make Peck run faster. Since Peck was in pain, Donan had to persuade Lauren to run slower to make filming the scene possible. Reception Arabesque received mixed to positive reviews from critics and audiences, earning a 64% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It was a box office success. Awards and Honors